Yo, what is up? This is KYD back once again, bringing you guys the fall of the House of Usher. Didn't know that this was actually by like my favorite artist or author of all time, Edgar Allan Poe. We all know the emo years kick it in. <sighs> Lost in a dreary madness forever within my soul. The abyss comes and breaks out to swallow me whole. <laughs> <laughs> Darkness inching forever closer to this nightmare I call a life. <laughs> But, ah, uh, man, at the end of the day, one of my favorite authors, I didn't even know he wrote this. He wrote a lot of things. Let's be honest about that. You know what I mean? Um, but my favorite piece from him is actually A Dream Within a Dream. That, that's actually my favorite poem of all time. But didn't know that he actually made this. I know this is loosely based off of, you know, something that he wrote. I think by the same name and I, and I you know and I was looking this up they actually had like a movie from like 1960 or something like that uh basically same thing as this but um yeah I'm interested to see how all this is going to be honestly I wrote this off like months ago when I first seen the <laughs> when I first seen the trailer I'm like eh, doesn't really seem like you know much I'm like what is this rich people killing each other or some shit <laughs> like it just you know it didn't it didn't really suit my interest but a lot of people are saying that it's you know good and at the same time it is from you know partly based off of my favorite author of all time so it's getting me in this right now so either way we are going to jump into this to see how everything goes so let's go another brick in the wall not joking okay happy new year's 1980 brick wall is that the is that the raven who's that rapping at my door <laughs> the danger is past and the lingering illness nigga we started a funeral for three people fever called living with two with four people in attendance <laughs> like, what for then the spirits of the dead who stood in life before thee are again in death around thee Oh, this must have been all of them dying. God. But that seems like a lot more than three. No. Upon the hill, shadowy, shadowy. Is that yeah, Mark Hamill? Is a symbol. Fucking Luke's in here? How it hangs upon the trees. A mystery of mysteries. The boundaries which divide life from death are at best shadowy and vague. Who shall say? Crepus. What is it? We grow sick and dizzy. She's here. Our first they got that fucking old country feel. Grampus. Name like, is Grampus in this, <laughs> in this day and age. Like, what the fuck? It's like naming somebody Loretta. <laughs> like, what? Was this 1800s, bitch? Like, what's going on? I've heard that name before, Arthur, Arthur Prim. So he died. She's dead. He's dead. In a freak accident. Oh, it's Danny Glover. Not joking. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit. You are not going to believe this. He's on the phone. He wants to meet with you tonight. Who? Him. He sent an address, a, a weird address, but it was actually him. Not a secretary, not an assistant, not even the Pim Reaper. It was him. Why is that car look fake? Um, what was I gonna say right now? Hey, you know, does every detective just have an obligatory like wall of to connect crimes and like yes there's there's a web here i'm just not seeing it <laughs> like like the question and fucking rorschach and all these other people oh yeah so i'm connecting the dots fucking charlie from uh <laughs> always sunny in philadelphia nigga he sent you here now you a brother 
You know you shouldn't go in here. <laughs> That's the reason why they usually have you with a white cop <laughs> along with you. He going first, going first. <laughs> you over know, here just chilling in this decrepit ass place. Cognac? No, thank you. Listen, I'm sorry for your loss. Your, your losses, rather. Henri Ford, de Dunion. Heritage County Grand Champagne, most expensive in the world. No, I was to say that looks expensive. I mean, you got like diamonds and shit on it. What the fuck? You know, a single pour, it probably costs twice your annual salary. Is he sure you don't want to take that drink, brother? <laughs> like, exactly. Let's see what a few years of your worth tastes like. He's like, Nick, I'm Muslim. I can't I drink mean, that. Roderick. It's unimaginable, and I am truly no, sorry. I understand, Augie. You're sorry my children are all dead. You finally got me. I waived my right to an attorney. You gotta get that on tape, brother. That's how I feel. It's not to celebrate. You got away with it. Again. You know, nobody gets away with anything, not really. <laughs> Madeline would beg to differ. Well, you can ask yourself. She's downstairs in the basement. It's my granddaughter, Lenore. You can take that if you need to. Grandkids take priority. Don't lecture me about family values. You're just as shit in that department as I am. I called Damn. you tonight to give you the only thing you've ever wanted. My confession. And that's where Usher comes from. Okay, that's where he comes in. All right. This is Assistant U.S. Attorney C.A. Dupin sitting with Roger Gusher. November 20th, 2023. Mr. This year? Okay. We're in my childhood home. Yeah, this is where I grew up. Kept it all these years. The whole neighborhood, actually. So I could Damn. watch the paint peel, the weeds grow, and smell the rot if I needed to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga said, I'm from the trenches, bro. So I bought the trenches just to be reminded of how shitty it was. Like, what? You brought what? 73 charges. All of them. Everything. All yours. Right now. Sounds like a golden opportunity. Bonus. Big booty bitches? I'll tell you how my children died. Oh, wow. Are they kid? Are you? Are they your kid kids? Or did you adopt a few? Or you were you just slang that thing to everybody? <laughs> like, I mean, it looked actually you rather swell. Understand the things I've done, unless you understand the life that Madeline and I were born into, and the woman who would shape every choice we'd ever make, our mother, Eliza, personal secretary to the CEO of Fortunato Pharmaceuticals, man of appetites, man of business once reportedly told his wife children are never too tender to be whipped like tough beef steaks the more you beat them the more tender they become that's a wild statement <laughs> i'm not gonna lie we were forbidden to go anywhere near longfellow's house but i agree though and sometimes you gotta whoop your kids ass <laughs> madeline being madeline insisted that we break it hmm. so madeline was a true troublemaker uh spy it. climbing my fence not here not ever we agreed let go of her arm nigga are those your kids <laughs> like you stay away from mr longfellow's house you're just trying to you know the rules madeline just like god the father is on high and loves us from far away the same is true for mr longfellow he's mean he's complicated like god Remember what Mother Teresa said. Pain and suffering are like the kiss of Jesus. If pain and suffering were the kisses of Jesus, then he kissed the living fuck out of my mother in the years that followed. <laughs> Damn. No. Mom, you have to drink, and, and we think maybe... Maybe we need to call a doctor, like, on the TV. No! Mom, please. Jesus, 
showed us how to heal the sick, and it wasn't through medicine. Body is a temple of God, and you'd pollute it. I mean, isn't your body technically polluted right now because of you being sick? But okay, let's go over it one more time. I wouldn't want to bother you, Mr. Longfellow, but since she worked for you so well for so long, almost 20 years, I thought you were going to know. She just keeps getting worse, and we know that you're you're so good at helping people. Sorry, you're here at my home, so I'll talk your mother into seeing a doctor. It's the least you could do for her, for us. I don't know. What Are those like kids, bro? <laughs> like... Now take your insinuations, your fucking false insinuations, take your grift, and get off my property. I like how they showed him just all dark like that. She passed away? What do we do? Well, we know what she wouldn't want us to do. If we call someone, that means police. Doctors, they'll embalm her. They can't. That, I know. That subtle change is crazy because the sun was up and it was just like they were sitting there the whole time and then it went down. The crisis, the danger was past. And the lingering illness was over. Made their own coffin out of the shed. Living was conquered at last. Come let the burial rite be read. The funeral song be sung. An anthem for the queenliest dead that ever died so young. That's sad, bro. You gotta bury your own parent. Not only did you bury her, you made her coffin. You did the best you could. And I assume the other niggas are their actual father, so it's like... You didn't bury her deep enough or something? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> what? We got zombies out here? They went in the house. Really pulling a Jesus right now. She did the Kill Bill shit, Uma Thurman. <laughs> Isn't that like the case where they used to have like a bell attached to like the grave just to make sure the person was actually dead, right? So if they were alive, they will pull the switch to be like, hey, look, nigga, I'm alive down here. What did we do? We're going to call a doctor. We've got to call a doctor. I don't care what she says. It was an accident. They, they He's behind you. To... Exactly. I knew it. Literally the Undertaker. We didn't know. I'm sorry. Please, mommy. <laughs> yeah, she ain't right. Don't show. Don't tell me she's gonna go down that street and fuck that nigga up. <laughs> I told you damn kids not to uh 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 serve this nigga up real quick. <laughs> oh, she about to serve you up, homeboy. You don't keep that locked? I don't know. Security is different. What are you doing here? It's giving we're in a gated community vibe. Like <laughs> see so think everything's fine. Yeah, she bitched him out. Did she just come back for that one vengeance? Like, I gotta fuck a nigga up. <laughs> the last thing my mother did in this life was kill a powerful man, and we carried that secret with us and loved her all the more. She was remarkable. So I inherited all of his inheritance. <laughs> Why are we talking about your mother? That's how I got my money, nigga. That's my dad. 
And I'm supposed to because she's here. Nigga, what? What do you mean? She's right behind you. <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, nah, I shouldn't have fucked with these white people. Like, high powered negotiation tactics. How some truly brilliant business people will plant these moments into high stakes conversations. For he said, I ain't falling for the bullshit. I'm not going to turn around, Roderick. It's fine with me. And she moved on screen. <laughs> Nigga, there's somebody behind you. We talk about how they died, but why I treated them the way I did, and why they were the way they were was because of my dad. This is wild. I just promised I would never do what he did. I would never close the gates. If you're my blood, you're my blood. Doesn't matter how you got here, who you. That was that was their dad. Like I said, <laughs> six kids by five mothers. Damn. You were slinging that thing. Okay. He's like, you know, I, I think I need a, a new being baddie right now. Like, yeah. Always open, but that doesn't mean you answer the phone. No, it does not. Your grandkids are at your house right now. And you're here with me. So let's skip the soapbox. If I'm not mistaken, I never saw your husband at the courtroom. Why is that, if you're such an expert on family values? Family didn't need to be there. I didn't want them anywhere near you people. You always were an effective order, Augie. Even your opening arguments, I was impressed. And that may have been the last time, you know. The last time you were impressed? No, the last time we were all together. That day was the last day we were all in the same place. Alive. Finally brought these charges in what will be the most meaningful pharmaceutical prosecution in the history of our country. They fucking over niggas with pharmaceuticals? The Usher family under CEO Roderick Usher and COO Madeline Usher spent four decades growing Fortunato into one of the most profitable, powerful companies on the planet Earth. They've achieved this by doing awful, awful things. That nigga really did fly around the world and just bang a bunch of people. <laughs> I mean, goddamn. They believe that people like them don't go to prison. Ladies and gentlemen, they're right. The House of Usher has weathered every storm, sling, and arrow and stands higher, stronger, and darker today than ever before. Look, because they got a few black kids? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hear oh, from one of them. An informant from within the inner circle, someone so close to this family's crimes, their Peace. testimony and evidence will be unimpeachable. Objection. Yeah, that's actually that's actually objection right there. You can't just pull that shit out of your ass. Everybody knows like ooh, you have to tell them what essentially you're going to be pulling out. Like, you no, know, to the defense. That violates me. Exactly. You can't just pull a fucking witness out of your ass and be like, oh, we got this guy here. <laughs> His name is Fred. Like, fear for their life. And, Your Honor, we have reason to believe this courtroom is compromised. That's absurd. And until we are satisfied, we will keep this informant's identity confidential. All the more reason not to mention this in your opening argument, Mr. Dibba. You're right. Your Honor, I, well, I got ahead of myself. I'm not the young lawyer I used to be. I'll happily strike. Will this regard the allusion to an informant? Yeah, he just wanted to cause discourse within their own group, huh? Yeah, I got somebody right here. Like, what? <laughs> now he's going to be wondering, who the fuck is it? You been talking, nigga? <laughs> hey, bro, I just got here. No, 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 you been talking, huh? All of them spouses, too. Yep. Yeah. Joyful. Like, who the fuck been talking in the family? He could have just been playing a game with y'all. I ain't really had nobody. But now you're gonna start talking about it. Dad doesn't do family dinners. This is about one thing. The mole. Informant. A mole is one of them who infiltrated us, and an informant is one of us giving something to them. Okay, so a mole is like Leonardo DiCaprio in The Departed, and an informant is like Jack Nicholson in The Departed. Look at this one. 
You are getting ridiculously good at that, honey. Well, you mean that movie that was copied off of a fucking Japanese movie? I think it was a Japanese movie. There's a an informant in the family. I don't think it can be true. If it is true, it's Perry. Oh, he's just a kid, Freddy. Are the charges true? Because if not, we've got nothing to worry about. But if someone really broke the law, shouldn't they be punished? Lenore, that is a oh, look brave and thoughtful thing to say. Especially if you want to get written out of the will. Exactly. She's morally conscious. <laughs> like, the rest of them, god damn, we got to keep this in the, in the family. My money is on one of the bastards. Let me guess, all the bastards are the minorities in your family? <laughs> like... That's your new stepmom. Could be Juno. Shut it. Don't mention her ever. She doesn't exist. Do you understand? She's not in the will, is she? It's interesting to do that because they keep talking about this will right now also, right? But it's the situation where he brings this up to cause discourse in the family. So now you might have people who wonder, like, should I just say something? Since If there's somebody else, should I just say something about this like, matter? Or other people in the family might push, you know, be like, oh, it's you, it's you, it's you. It's like, no, it's actually none of you motherfuckers. I just fucked with you. Speaking of fucking, who knows how late this goes tonight? I canceled the girl. I didn't know there was a girl tonight. Well, there was, and she's canceled. Well, pushed today. Dad needs to see his kids don't need half a billion dollars in an endless supply of test monkeys to be successful. Just about. And we went to the test monkeys. All right, let's close her up and cross our fingers. I did you an artificial hearts? What? It really fucking would. I have to say, I think we're gonna struggle to get peer review. I didn't say it's because of the nightshade. Because of the nightshade, I am gonna say it again. You hear those stories? Tourists in South America get powder blown in their face and it paralyzes them? Yeah, I remember those stories. Stuff. <laughs> really? You just have to keep it away from Perry. We'll end up in some covered drink. <laughs> Alright, so she sounds some bullshit. I'd like to meet your family. But there's a whole process for that. The significant others are a thing. You don't want that yet. Look, I, I don't know what time I'm going to get with back. With the MK? But, uh, we can talk about it then, okay? I'll be right 11, back which is a horrible game. Like, oh, oh you're in the elevator. I love Mortal Kombat, but I could okay, not play that shit. You gotta go. You promised me a selfie. Now, fuck. A selfie? Nigga, what? To suck my dick? What? <laughs> like... My friends aren't going to believe I met Napoleon Usher. <laughs> so you suck the dick just to impress your friends. Women. <laughs> Mm. Mm. <sighs> okay. This bitch is right there. Hey, sweetie. Priority one is the informant. I want you to start with Perry, obviously, but I just, I don't think he's clever enough to keep it off TikTok. Do you need us after dinner? No, not tonight. What I do need is for you to stay on top of Victorine and the rest of it. If this informant thing is real, I have to be the one that finds them. It's I've never hosted on anything before. You'll be great. You don't really have to do anything. But all of them, all at once. Thank God we didn't have a wedding. I didn't have to look them all in the eye. God. They will love you because I love you. And the only thing stronger than love is how fucking scared they are of getting cut out of the will. Which is actually the case. <laughs> like... I was going to call, but figured this was important enough that uh, I need to talk to you, Roderick. Go ahead. Alone, I think, might be best. So I've been snitching the entire time, bro. Like, he told him some important stuff. You may have to sit by the fire and be like, these niggas plotting. <laughs> this is Glenn Fiddick, 96. We make it the official whiskey of the club and they open up the entire library of bottles to us. You've had a year, a calendar year, to come up with a proposal for your first business venture, a venture we'd like to support, and you've come up with a nightclub. Yes. <laughs> Franchise possibilities. Prospero Rome, Prospero New York, Prospero Dubai. Well, outside of naming this uh, establishment after yourself, what else makes it at all worthwhile? Well, Prospero's going to be one of the most exclusive nightclubs in the entire world. We're going to turn movie stars and monarchs away with attitude. We're going to make Studio 54 look like fucking... A nightclub is kind of... 
usually they have they're very boom or bust types of situations. And even if you make it, it's not something that stays around for a long time. It's where the movie star that everybody fucking worships is busy giving head to 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 the real VIPs. And I'm thinking a tiered membership. Roderick, please, anytime. No, oh, tiered membership. Why didn't you fucking say so? No, we won't set up a meeting at the office. Being an usher is about changing the fucking world. It's not a blowjob whiskey bar. <laughs> Members, I'll come to the office on Monday and... Oh, fuck's sake. That's all. This is why I'm snitching on you niggas. <laughs> well, I don't think he's the informant, but he's not got a clue about business. Let's get in there and watch their eyes. When the paperwork's passed out, I'll be able to tell. What is going on with you? Something is going on with you. All good. Right behind you. Damn, why are you snitching on me, sis? What 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 I do to you? You remind me of dad. No. <laughs> He's like, I'll try it. You know what to say bad. <laughs> For the road. Damn. I'm gonna say, what did the devil just pop up? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? The shining nigga? What? Hey, you, you, wanna, you wanna take that drink? I don't got no money. Oh, don't worry, it's paid for. No charge? Your money's no good here. I thought we could all benefit from this. Bitch, weren't you just painting that book? Oh no. Wait, it's fucking cake. <laughs> I'm not impressed by that, to be quite honest. Coffee? No way. Mm. I bet it's cake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, why did they uh, put in the meme in there and shit? Everything is fucking cake. All that fondant they put on that shit. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Mr. Pym has some important paperwork for each of you. She's trying to move back so she has a good look at everybody. Is this also cake? This is a robust new non-disclosure agreement. Sure of inheritance, waiving of civil suits. You guys, we really should get together more often. It's just a balm for the soul. The Father and I appreciate this display of confidence, loyalty, and family. Now sign it. It's been a minute since I've gotten to feel like a member of the family. Al, have you gotten to sign an original PIM yet? Wait till you see the prenup. Oh yeah, speaking of prenups, how are things, Juno? I prefer not to sign anything without my guy looking at it first. Everybody's like, you crazy? Yeah, it's just like, look, I'm not signing this shit. Tonato is the reason you exist. It's the reason you can have your little knockoffs, your heart implants, your debutante balls. Debutante balls, is that what you think I do? The company is the family, and we expect each of you to defend it with your life. When I find out who's been talking to the government, to the goddamn government, against your own blood, there won't be enough of you left to sue. Left to sue the bloody puddle of gore in the designer's shoes. To the lucky usher who figures out who's talking to the feds. 50 million cash, no strings, no taxes. All right. For yes, I'm putting a bounty on you. Yep. Happy hunting. I wish there was just that one kid who was just like, I'm not signing this bullshit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Not everyone trying to kiss his ass. Like, uh, uh, will I get the inheritance? Like, get the fuck out of here. Forgive me, Roderick, but the death of your children. Later. I am responsible. There's a woman. I know that face. Oh, the devil. Adam's real first wife, Lilith. You know my favorite holiday, New Year's Eve, you know why? Resolutions. People take that word for granted. They don't realize just how heavy a word it is. Most people go their whole wasted, stupid lives without one minute of true resolution. That's true. So this is where it all happened, 1980. And say this isn't when it all happened, but it, it's a, it's a very significant moment for him. That's one of the things that was shown. The girl, uh, this New Year's Eve party, and also uh, a brick wall, and then also the deaths of its kids. You guys good? Coffee. 
costume party? Oh. Jay Gatsby, you're Daisy Buchanan. <laughs> Gin Rickies, then? Gatsby didn't drink. Stayed sharp and sober. Watch everybody else drink. Nothing for you, then. No, we're drinking tonight, both of us. Whiskey. Neat. She is so... the fucking head of this whole situation. Haven't seen this place before. Did you just open? Sort of. Thought it'd be more crowded. New Year's and all. Oh, it'll fill up later. We're a midnight business. Tonight, anyway. Mm. <laughs> Where's hands? 1979. May it rest in peace. God, I can't believe we really did that. The important thing is that people see us tonight. Alibi. Crowded enough for a few witnesses, not so crowded that nobody notices. Another? Maybe just one. Then we're switching to beer, slowing down. Night's young, whiskey's pricey. First two are on the house. Want to start a tab? Buy now, pay later. What I say. I'm the kind of man likes to know who's buying their drinks, Lloyd. It's not a matter that concerns you, Mr. Torrance. At least not at this point. Got another hour or so to think about your resolutions. Know what a resolution is, really? It's a deal you make with the future. The future's coming fast. It's nearly here. You already know your resolutions, don't you? Yeah. We've got the same one. We're gonna change the world. New Year's 1980. I remember what else happened that night. That was when everything changed at Fortunato. People still whisper about what possibly could have happened that night. That's where you're taking me, isn't it? Oh, the raven. Your life will take a complete change of course. You feel it, both of you, in the air. We're sitting outside of time and space. We buried three of my children today. The other three last week. I know. <laughs> wow, that's a big bomb right there. You'll be reluctant to accept it or believe it, but I promise you, every single piece is important. At best, shadowy and vague. Who shall say where the one ends and where the other begins? Grab we peer into the abyss. What is it? She's here. Our first impulse is to shrink from the danger. Unaccountably, we remain. So his wife, his sister, his granddaughter, and him survived. Our sensations during the sweeping precipitancy of a fall from such a height that it involves that one most ghastly and loathsome of all the most ghastly and loathsome images of death and suffering which have ever presented themselves to our imagination i mean the thing is too is that you put a bounty on the kids at the end of the day okay no oh, wow Donaldson. No other doctors. Only Donaldson. The fucking raven just staring at him. I'm like, what are we, is this? Is this really playing off of that? <laughs> Who's that rapping on my door? Yes, the sad, lonely old man. Like, it's time. Wow. There's a lot to unwrap there. Uh, to be quite honest, and I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> but big thing here is that um yeah it actually says it here based on the works of Edgar Allan Poe um wow it was kind of just getting introduced to our cast to be quite honest with this episode and him just kind of telling his life and then where it kind of leads in this whole entire situation like his family particularly his kids all have some essential negative aspects about them especially when it comes to just the family fortune and wanting to be written in the will and whatnot the sister is very dominant uh, when it comes to him like he's more of like passive aggressive or the one that kind of leans back and then she gets him to do certain things here or there uh very forceful in the way that she is right she's like a hurricane while he's just like um 
nice little drizzle <laughs> out there, essentially. Like, he has his own things too, but they don't necessarily peer too much into it. It kind of focuses more on the sister's ferocity, if you will. Um, but overall, I enjoyed this episode a lot just to kind of get where people are at at this point in time. The detective that's going in there, his own story, or talking about, you know, these things that he has essentially faced at such a young age. I think it really said, I'm from, I'm from the hood. No, <laughs> He said, I'm from the gutter, so I bought the gutter, all right? Yeah, yeah, I bought that shit, just so I can go back every now and then and be like, I used to be this broke, I'm never going back. <laughs> uh, but interesting play on the whole pharmaceutical thing and then, you know, legal business and stuff like that, benefiting off of people and stuff, which, you know, it's not like that happens today, you know? <laughs> especially in america like who would ever thought that this was the case uh but yeah that's pretty much it with this um enjoy the episode a lot and just can't wait to see how this essentially all unfolds so all six of his kids essentially die um you know like i said his granddaughter him his sister and his wife were the ones that stay alive uh, we have to see what happens to essentially a barkeeper or what she's talking about because she was like, oh, this this place, uh, you know, it exists between the boundaries of space and time. And I was, I'm just like, did you really just walk into the devil's bar and you're just like, cool, because <laughs> like, she because Madeline even asked, she was just like, so did you guys just like uh, open up? We've never seen this place before. <laughs> she's just like something like that. <laughs> I'm like, is this a shining? sort of a situation where it's like yeah you've been dealing with the devil the entire time they just came back to reap what you sowed essentially but either way uh very enjoy this episode a lot and stuff so i'll see you guys later have a good one peace <laughs>